here uh, now we are supposed to study about the components of the phloem tissue what are the components of the phloem tissue are actually with what elements the phloem tissue is made up of uh, in earlier class we have studied about xylem xylem tracheid vessels uh, xylem parenchyma xylem fibers all that in the similar way you have phloem tissue phloem tissue is also made up of different components those are uh, this is uh, before going there we will see here this is the uh, diagram of the phloem tissue where you will see the phloem elements you will see the phloem parenchyma you will see the companion cells you will see the nucleus and the sieve plates mm -hmm. the different components of the phloem elements are uh, those are sieve elements these are sieve tubes we have companion cells which are also otherwise called as by other some anatomies also call them as strasburger cells because uh, anatomist called strasburger also identified this uh, next is phloem parenchyma in this also along, uh, as like uh, similar to xylem parenchyma phloem parenchyma is again of two types here axial parenchyma and ray parenchyma here also similar to xylem fibers we are also having the phloem fibers these are also called as bast fibers or bast fibers bast or bast fibers okay this is the structure of the phloem tissue where we can see maximum all the elements present in the phloem components uh, this is a rough diagram we can see phloem elements phloem phloem parenchyma uh, you can see the nucleus the tissues which is support uh, so adjacent to the phloem cells are called as companion cells and sieve plates uh, so first one we will be dealing with the sieve elements in sieve elements uh, what are the important characteristics of sieve elements we will be studying the uh, first and the foremost we can see is sieve elements are again uh, will not have the nucleus it will show the disappearance of the nu nucleus this the sieve elements have the basic characteristics like it will have no nucleus but it will show the presence of sieve areas and these are the important uh, these are the components as uh, sieve areas are considered as the important components of the sieve elements these also plays an important role in the translocation of the food material these sieve elements and the sieve areas sieve tubes or sieve cells which are connected with the sieve elements also help a major role play a major role in the translocation of the organic solutes or food material from one place to the other place in the plant body and here sieve elements are again of two types uh, these are of two types those are called as sieve cells and sieve tubes okay now first we will be dealing with sieve cells now what are sieve cells sieve cells are these are narrow and long cells with pointed ends these are long narrow cells with pointed ends and the walls uh, end walls are oblique one of the major component of the sieve element is sieve cells sieve cells are the long narrow tube like cells with pointed ends the end walls are oblique ends these sieve cells are formed from single mother cell and here these end walls the protoplasm of adjacent cell adjacent cells cell of phloem is connected to the other cell through the help of the protoplasmic content which is present in between the two cell components or two cells so the connecting link between the protoplast of one cell of the sieve tissue to the phloem tissue to the other is because of the presence of the sieve areas this is occurring because of the presence of the protoplasm protoplasm is the basic component for the connection of one cell to the adjacent cell and here these are also known as the connecting uh, the connecting component between the one cell to the other cell is because of the presence of a plasmodesmata the one cell of the sieve, uh, sieve uh, area cell is connected to the other sieve cell because of the presence of the plasmodesmata in pteridophytes and in gymnosperms
when are these sieve areas or sieve cells are present these sieve cells cells are present towards the ends of the lateral wall towards the if suppose it is a lateral wall it will be present towards the ends of the lateral walls of the sieve cells for example if we consider it as a sieve cell in tetrapods and gymnosperm these type of sieve cells or sieve areas these sieve cells will be present towards the end of the lateral walls the sieve plates are seen there is a occurrence of sieve plates in this sieve cells so the presence of sieve plates occurs only in the sieve cells and it is not seen in the sieve tubes so sieve cell has a special character that a connecting link between here to here one cell to another cell is because of the presence of a bridge like structure it may also occur through the protoplasmic exchange also and that the bridge like structure which is present is called as sieve plates so this sieve plate occurrence is the characteristic feature of the sieve cells it is the character because of which it is being different or it is being distinct or unique with that of the other sieve components of the phloem so what is sieve cell sieve cell is a type of long narrow cells with uh, pointed ends their end walls are oblique they origin from the same mother cell one cell is connected to the other cell through the protoplasmic component protoplast and again in uh, especially they have small uh, pl sieve plate like structure which help in the connection of one sieve pl cells to the other sieve cells and in tetrapods in gymnosperm these presence of sieve cells occur at the end walls of the lateral cells they are not uh, present at the beginning or in the center if it is a lateral cell then it will be towards the end of the lateral cell wall okay sieve tubes in addition to the sieve areas uh, sieve tubes uh, the sieve areas of the sieve tubes are the more specialized type of structure these are connected to the other Uh, sieve elements with the help of the sieve tubes or tube like structures these sieve tube like structures are originally in the form of tube they are connected one above the other and each end and form a perpendicular rows of cells okay now this sieve tubes these cells are long wide and they will be connecting from one one cell to the other cell with the presence of the sieve pores here we will come across a concept called as sieve plates we also heard in previous wording the what is sieve plate here one sieve tube is connected with the other sieve tube and the connecting cells are connected with the, because of the presence of a protoplasm is occurring in the form of a uh, plate like structures so those structures are called as sieve plates and in the transverse end walls we can see the occurrence of the sieve plates transverse section we can see the clear occurrence of the sieve plates sieve plates these are occurring one above the other these may be occurring in the transverse or in oblique forms now sieve plates uh, when we talk about sieve plates what are sieve plates normally this type of sieve plate arrangement or connecting between the two sieve cells is occurring in the majority of the sieve tubes will show the occurrence of the sieve plates now these appear only in angiosperms now they are comparable uh, these sieve plates are comparable to the perforation plates of xylem perforation plates of xylem these are acting as a connecting strands from one sieve element to the other sieve element sieve plates are those plate like structure which helps in a connection between the one sieve cell or one sieve area to the other sieve area so basically it is like a bridge like pattern which are present and they appear like in the uh, in the appearance they are in the form of plates then these are called as sieve plates connecting strands through the the connection between the two sieve areas is the connecting strands are called as sieve plates these sieve plates are of two types those are simple another one is compound sieve plate Right? now what is the simple what is the difference between the simple sieve plate and the compound sieve plate now in simple sieve plate uh, there is existence of only uh, one sieve area present there is only one there is only one sieve area present then it is called as simple sieve plate and if you are having more than one sieve area then it is called as compound sieve plates now what is the example of simple sieve plate as per your syllabus the example will be
cucurbita and here the example will be vitis and pyrus malus apple. So, you may get the question the simple sieve tube sieve plates are seen in cucurbita compound sieve plates are seen in pyrus malus or vitis as per your syllabus is there. Okay? Now, this simple sieve plates are considered as the primitive one. Compound sieve plates are advanced version or advanced type of sieve plates. Okay. So, this is about sieve tubes and sieve plates. Sieve areas in the sieve tubes are the uh, more important components of the sieve elements. These tube like these are arranged in the form of tube like structures, they are arranged one above the other and these sieve tubes are connected, one sieve tube is connected to the other with the help of some plate like or cytoplasmic bridge like structures, those are called as sieve plates and sieve plates are of two types. What is sieve plate actually? This is confirmed only to the sieve tubes and present only in the angiosperms and these sieve plates are compared to that of the perforation pores of the xylem. So, whatever the function of the xylem perforation pores does, the same it does here. Now, these sieve plates are again of two types on the basis of the number of the sieve areas present. If there is only one sieve area then that is called as simple sieve plate and if it is more than one sieve area it is called as compound sieve plate. Examples are uh, cucurbita and here the example is pyrus and vitis and here this is as this has only one sieve area it is called as primitive and as it has more than one sieve areas it is called as an advanced type of sieve plates. Okay? There is one more topic here, one of the important component elements of the sieve, uh, phloem tissue are presence of companion cells. The other name for companion cell is Strasburger cell. Okay? Now, these are uh, among the several parenchyma cells associated with the sieve elements, these are called as uh, uh, among the several parenchyma cells which, which are associated with the sieve element, the companion cells are the more specialized type of cells. These are uh, developed along with the sieve tubes. These companion cells, here we have drawn the diagram here, companion cells. For example, it may also be like this, if it is a is element, then the com companion tissues will be, companion cells will be like this attached to the sieve elements. Okay. These are formed along with the sieve tube elements. The origin, the sieve tube elements and the companion cells both together both together have an origin from the same mother cells. So, what, did, what does it mean? The origin of the sieve tube elements, sieve tubes and the companion cells occur from the same mother cell. Here, if the origin is occurring from the same mother cell, the division of the mother cell will give rise to two types of cells. First cell will give rise to sieve tubes and the other cells may give rise to one or, or other cell or first cell will give rise to sieve, sieve, uh, sieve tubes and the second cell may give rise to one or two companion cells. So, what is what, uh, what does I say now? So, uh, the origin of the companion cell is basically from the sieve tubes. Whatever uh, origin is there for the sieve tube uh, applies for the companion cell because sieve tubes and companion cells originate from the same mother cell. If there is a division in the mother cell, it will divide and get divided into first cell and second cell. First cell will give rise to sieve tubes and the second cell may give rise to one or two companion cells. Now, these one or two companion cells are highly specialized cells and these sieve tubes may be associated with companion cells or they may be arranged separately. Okay? Now, these sieve tubes and companion cells are attached in such a manner bonding between the two cells here, sieve tubes and companion cells in such a way that in spite of lot of uh, maceration or a lot of techniques used, we are unable to, we you will see that these two cells, sieve tubes and companion cells are unseparable. You cannot separate the sieve tubes and the companion cells. And here, these sieve tubes may either occur 
in a combination of companion cells or it may occur individually or solitary and these are arranged one above the other companion cells. Now, here now the CO2 elements originate from the companion cells and here one more uh, one more aspect is uh, as we said earlier every C, uh, element starts its origin from the procambial embryonic stage and as it grows the maturity at the time of maturity it undergoes division. So, in case of companion cells also uh, as we are going on telling that the origin of the companion cells and C tubes is same, but the differentiation between the companion cell and the C tube takes a lot of variation because the differentiation or variation in the companion cells though it is occurring from the same mother cells will show a much earlier time when compared to the C O 2 elements. I mean the companion cells will show the maturity and the variations occurrence will be much earlier when compared to that of the C tubes and again when the C tubes get mature when the, the protoplasm gets degenerated and it stops functioning then these companion cells also will get degenerated. So, this is the difference between the uh, companion cells and the C tubes and again when we come to the origin of companion cells from where does the companion cells have originated or what? What is the origin of companion cells? From where does originally these companion cells originate? Basically, we are not able to see or we cannot see the existence of companion cells in pteridophytes and gymnosperms. no companion cells. So, where do we see the companion cells? In gymnosperms, uh, where do we see the presence of companion cells? Then in gymnosperms, the companion cells are, we can see the presence of companion cells in, in angiosperms. So, what about gymnosperms? In gymnosperms, we cannot see companion cells, but we are able to see an another specialized structure which is more or less equal in function, but where uh, um, in structure with that of the companion cells. So, those are in gymnosperms, we will see a specialized storage parenchyma as we said in the earlier uh, of the beginning of the lecture, those are called as albuminous cells. So, in case of gymnosperms, uh, as we said earlier in pteridophyte and gymnosperm, there are no companion cells. So, what about the storage uh, material, storage phenomena? So, in gymnosperms, another specialized modified structures are present. Those are also comparable to the companion cell and they are also helpful in the storage of the food material. Those are called as albuminous cells. Now, these are, how do we recognize the, um, that these are albuminous cells? Uh, as we said companion cells are the cells which are associated with the sieve elements, they will be connected to the sieve elements. Now, whereas albumina cell, you can uh, identify albumina cells because of the presence of cell stains on in them. The cells will be stained, then that type of cells we can say that yes, it is an albumina cell. Now, in gymnosperms, as we said in angiosperm, uh, companion cells are originated from the C O tubes and they have the same mother cell and the division of the mother cell gave rise to one cell gave rise to C O tube and the second cell gave rise to the one or two companion cell we said. But in gymnosperms, in gymnosperms the C U cells and A cells, this is albumina cell. So, uh, in gymnosperms, the albuminous cells and sieve cells will not show the origin from the same meristematic cell, where, whereas when we compare with that of the companion cell, the only difference is it is not originating from the same mother cell, whereas companion cells originate from the same mother cells along with the sieve tubes. Okay? Now, when we compare the companion cells and albuminous cells, these are structurally and morphologically and functionally these are similar to the companion cells more or less they do the same function what does a companion cell does the storage of food material it is a specialized parenchyma cells which are seen in the phloem along with the uh, either it uh, may be a Strasburger cell companion cell or it may also be a albuminous cells parenchyma cells. Now next is this is about companion cells and albuminous cells how you identify albuminous cell the cells will get stains cell stains 
then that is uh, if in a, a microscopic view if you see the cells are stained then those type of cells are called as albuminous cells and companion cells are the cells which are present adjacent to the sieverias or sieve tubes it is uh, occurring as a adjacent tissue then those are called as companion cells uh, next uh, one more uh, components of phloem tissue is phloem parenchyma as we said in xylem, there was xylem parenchyma because the parenchyma is present in the xylem tissue, we called it as xylem parenchyma. Now, it is phloem parenchyma because a parenchyma which is associated with phloem or parenchyma which is present in the phloem is called as phloem parenchyma. Along with the phloem, it, what is the function of phloem here, phloem parenchyma here? It is also helpful in the translocation of food material or storage of food material. Now, we said uh, it is useful for the storage of food material. So, what, what type of storage uh, of food material is occurring here? It will store in the form of starch. It may store fats. It may store other organic food substances. Organic food which are present in the form of uh, uh, present. Uh, it may store starch, fats and organic food and other reserve food materials which are required for the phloem component here these cells are present cells of the phloem parenchyma are oriented uh, appear a long these are long vertical rows in the form of long vertical rows as in the as we see the primary phloem when we started the class we said there are two types of phloem primary secondary phloem so the arrangement of the phloem parenchyma will be more or less similar to that of the primary phloem and again these phloem parenchyma may help in the storage of the food material to both the companion cell and the albuminous cell. So, it means it may also support companion cells and albuminous cells to certain extent for the storage of the food material. And again, these parenchyma cells of the phloem uh, originates, where do they originate? These originates from the cambium. The phloem parenchyma cells originate from the cambium, and on the basis of the uh, and on the basis of the arrangement, these uh, phloem parenchyma are again classified into two types. As we said in xylem, xylem parenchyma also had two types: axial parenchyma, axial and uh, parenchyma. So here also you have phloem parenchyma on the basis of number of cells, or in basis of arrangement of cells. Xylem phloem parenchyma is of two types. That is. Axial parenchyma and another one is ray parenchyma. Now, if these parenchyma are arranged, these are arranged parallel to the long axis of the sieve elements. If these parenchyma cells are present parallel to the sieve elements in the longitudinal rows, then those are called as axial phloem parenchyma. And if these are arranged perpendicular to the sieve elements, in that uh, in uh, perpendicular to the sieve elements then this type of phloem phloem parenchyma is actually of two types axial and ray parenchyma axial parenchyma why we are calling axial uh, parenchyma phloem parenchyma is the type of uh, parenchyma where these are arranged parallel to the sieve elements in a longitudinal rows if these uh, ray parenchyma here these are arranged perpendicular to the sieve elements then that is called as ray parenchyma okay now these are also called as these ray parenchyma also form a structure called as phloem ray okay now next last one we have one more component of the phloem tissue is that is uh, called as phloem fibers in many flowering plants, in many flowering plants, the fibers are more important as both in the living form as well as in the non-living forms. Okay. Now, the occurrence of these fibers, these points will come for your entrance. The occurrence of these fibers is, uh, the occurrence of uh, these fibers is very rare in pteridophytes. And sometimes these may occur, sometimes these fibers may occur in gymnosperms and angiosperms. The fibers 
These flame fibers are both useful if uh, they are in the living form or non-living form. These are rarely occurring in pteridophytes and um, we, we can see more of the fibers in the gymnosperms and angiosperms. Oh, here, the, in flowing fibers, you will come across a word called as simple pits are present. There is occurrence of only simple pit, uh, only one simple pit is present in the cell walls. The occurrence of simple pit is there in the cell wall. Now, what is the com composition of cell wall? Here, the phloem fibers, the cell walls may be both lignified as well as non-lignified. If it is a cannabis, then the cell walls are lignified. Now, whereas in case of lignum, the cell walls are not lignified. Now, these fibers are exclusively called as bast fibers or bast fibers. This is also called as bast or bast fibers. Because 30% of whatever the fibers are produced are commercially important. We get rubber like Havia brasilensis is there. That, was, uh, that type of rubber is coming from uh, the, or we, uh, we can say the preparation of jute is occurring from this type of fibers. Commercially important fibers are occurring. These are useful for making ropes, mats, all these type. Uh, make preparations are done by using these types of fibers okay so here uh, this ends with your phloem tissue so uh, what we have learned here phloem is also called as leptome and it is also called as the water food conducting tissue and it is also having the components like sieve elements in sieve elements you have sieve cells sieve tubes you have companion cells you have albuminous cells you have phloem fibers uh, sorry you have phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers Okay, this is the diagram of phloem and these are uh, the details of what we have studied.